OK, this interval right here is pretty bizarre, right? Because I don't think I can use any trick identity to simplify this in a nice way to integrate this right away and things like that, right? And yeah. So you really have to think about how to make things happen. And the best scenario is the following. You should come with some other integrals that you know how to integrate much better, all right? So that's the approach. You should ask yourself, wouldn't it be nice if somebody gives you another integral instead than this one, right? OK, so now let me just write this down for you guys. Uh, seriously, this right here is bizarre. And you can ignore the top for now, right? So it's an uh, integral of something over 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x. Well, let me just focus on the bottom. 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x dx. Hmm. If you have the right to put whatever you want on the top, how can you make this a really easy integral? Don't say zero, OK? <laughs> uh, well, what if I put down 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x? This right here is pretty easy, isn't it? Because this is nothing but just 1 inside. This is the integral of 1 in the x world, so this is just x. So we can do that totally, huh? So that's good. As I said, I, I, I don't want to put on zero because that, that defeats the whole purpose and things like that. So this is one of the integrals that I know that I wish I can have rather than that. And if you look at, I kind of have a, a small different, like a linear combination, this and that, because this is sine x, this is 3 sine x. I need to have like a plus 2 sine x or things like that, huh? But anyway, let's also look at another integral. Suppose I have something over 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x. What should I put on the top so that this integral is also pretty easy? Is it 1? I don't think so. And once again, of course, please don't say 0. <laughs> but you know, if the top happens to be exactly the derivative of the bottom, this is just going to be ln of the denominator, isn't it? So if you look at this right here, the derivative of 3 sine x is 3 cosine x. So let me just put this down plus 3 cosine x. And the derivative of 4 cosine x is negative 4 sine x. If I just put this on the top, this is just as easy. Because all in all, you can do a u substitution that u equal to this, and you end up with the integral of 1 over u, right, pretty much. And this is going to be ln. Technically, still take the absolute value of the denominator, 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x, right? And ignore the plus z because the main deal is this one, not these two, OK? So if you would like, you can differentiate this real quick, and you get back to this. So we know we're on the right track. And now, how can we make the connection, though? Well, I would like to just break this apart into a combination of this and that. Hopefully, it's just a constant multiple of this plus another constant multiple of that. And then I can have the answer right here to use. OK, so that's the idea. And with that said, let me just put this down right here for you guys. This is what we want to achieve. I want to have the integral sine x plus 2 cosine x over 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x. And if you guys haven't noticed already, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. OK, I'll make that happen. But anyway, I want to make this equal to some constant. I will just call that to be a times this integral instead. So I will just put down 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x over I know this is kind of redundant, but you know, maybe this is going to help us out, so just be patient. Anyway, this is the first part, and then we will be adding this with another constant multiple of that integral. So that will be the integral of negative 4 sine x plus 3 cosine x over 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x dx. Okay? And what do we do? Well, let's just pay attention to the following. 
let's just make this right let's make this happen of course we're just integrating and we just care about to find the a and b value right this is what we want i just want to pay attention to the top in order integrations for now okay i want to have sine x plus 2 cosine x to be the following for this one, I will have to do a times this, right? That's going to be 3a times sine x, and then a times that, which is plus 4a cosine x. And then I will add it with b times that, which is technically minus 4b sine x, and then b times that, which is plus 3b cosine x. And on the left-hand side, it's just... 1 sine x plus 2 cosine x. But on the right hand side, if you collect all these sine x terms, well, if this one has the sine x and also this one has the sine x, I can factor out the sine x and put it at the end. Okay, so I will put down 3a minus 4b first and then multiply by sine x. And then this is 4a cosine x plus 3b cosine x. Once again, I will factor out the cosine x, and I will just put down plus 4a plus 3b, and then multiply by cosine x. This is kind of similar to partial fraction, huh? In the clear way, I would say. And now you see, on the left-hand side, the coefficient, the number in front of the sine x is 1. So that means this guy, 3a minus 4b has to be 1. So that's the first condition. So let me just put this down. 3a minus 4b has to be 1. And secondly, this right here, we have a 2. And this right here is 4a plus 3b, right? So that means this guy has to be the same as 2. Let me just put this down. 4a plus 3b has to be 2. And you see, it is possible to actually find a and b to make this happen. And we just have to solve the system of equations so this is pretty nice and let me just go ahead and multiply everything by 3 on the top and multiply everything by 4 on the bottom so that way I will have negative 12b and then positive 12b and then we'll just do this real quick okay so this is 9a minus 12b equals to 3 and then 16a plus 12b equals to 8 and you can just combine these two equations by adding them up. You get 25a equals to 11. So, of course, a is equal to 11 over 25, right? And if a is equal to 11 over 25, oh my god, you have to do more fractions. Plug into the first equation, maybe. So, you will get, let me just write this down. 3 times 11 over 25 minus 4b is equal to 1. This is 33 over 25 minus 4b is equal to 1, which is the same as saying 25 over 25. And this is negative 4b equal to minus this on both sides. So you get negative 8, right? Negative 8 over 25. And we can multiply both sides by negative 1 over 4. Multiply both sides by negative 1 over 4. And this and now cancel, we get b equal to reduce the little fraction. It's 2 and a positive, so positive 2 over 25, right? So, you can see that A is 11 over 25. I will just now put down 11 over 25. And B is 2 over 25. I will just replace that with 2 over 25. So what's the answer? Well, let's do this down right here. This is equal to, oh, just write this down like this. This right here is equal to 11 over 25 times this is just nothing but an x right here. And this right here is just 20, I mean 2 over 25 times ln of the denominator. So I will just write down ln of the denominator and of course attach the absolute value. So 3 sine x plus 4 cosine x. Close that. So that is equal to this, it's equal to that, plus this, and at the end, of course, you add the plus C. And here, we are done! Okay, this is 
wouldn't it be nice if you have this and that situation and how to make things happen to work for you just like that hopefully you, hopefully you guys like this video and uh, if you are a calculus 2 teacher just like I am you can you know, assign this question to your student maybe anyway that's it